Right, so today I thought we'd have a play with some infusions. I'll just find the page. Somebody asked me to show how I'd done. Oh, I will find it eventually. This page. It was done with infusions, paper had the infusions, quite a lot of their quite a few of their stamps, some by Seth Apter, um, some Ink and the Dog. Uh, this was a vintage photo, some tape, a quote out of a book, uh, but basically the background is gesso masking tape, which somebody asked me how wide this masking tape was, and it is 2.5 centimetres wide. It's just from uh, my local art store. It's not low tack masking tape at all. Um, so I thought we'd do a page similar to that, but possibly a different colour. Yeah, I think I want a different colour, so we'll maybe go for... I can't remember what that one was, but we'll maybe go slate blue. So I've got my vintage book. It's getting quite full. Um, I think I need to prop... That's too deep. I need to prop this half of the book up a little bit, just so it doesn't keep flopping down. I want it level, basically. Let's have a look, maybe a couple of palettes would do it. Yeah, that, that's going to be a little bit be better. Maybe another one on the top. Yeah, when we get going that will make it level. So, <clears throat> because masking tape isn't permanent, it's not meant to be permanent, I'm going to add quite a lot of, this is a Yoohoo glue stick, I'm going to add quite a lot of that to my pages just so that I know it will stick. I've got, I've done all my pages already with one central strip down here where the signatures um, join together because I know that's a weak point and I know that's where a lot of ink and things like that will leak through onto previous pages or future pages. I'm probably going to speed this up because this is going to be very boring watching me put masking tape on a page. Just doing it randomly. I think I've possibly explained this on a previous video. Right, there we are. I think that's... Oh, we'll have a little bit up there. I haven't got any right at the top. We'll have some right at the top here. You won't particularly see this, but what you will see is the texture that it gives. The infusions will pick up on the texture a little bit. Right, I've got my PBO gesso. Let's make sure we're in shot. Yeah, I think we are. Yeah. Which I always have in my sauce bottle. Good dollop of that. I'll put a 
fair bit on the join of the two signatures. Right. This is where I get my very used protector pages out. And I'll just put those in between the previous pages and these pages just so that I can go right, go right over the edges to make sure everything has got gesso on. I have got a little bit of spray from when I did the previous pages just on the edge here I'm not bothered about that it'll all go into the mix right. oh it's come very dark I think it's going to rain I might have to put the light on. So I'm just going to um, stop the video. I'll dry this, put the light on and we'll come back and we'll do the... Right, now hopefully you'll be able to see the edge of the page. Uh, I've covered the underneath pages in my book with kitchen roll. Basically so that it'll, I've still got my protector pages on but then I've put kitchen roll because if any of the infusions go around and then I spray them with water I can use this later for collage paper so I'm not wasting anything. I've changed my mind because I've got a little bit of green on here. Uh, I've changed my mind on the infusions I'm going to use. I'm going to use green man, olive tree and the sage which are all greens. Um, I've got a bit of green so I might as well go with that. You can see here I've got a little bit of the text showing through once the gesso has dried. That's because this was where the glue from a glue stick hadn't dried and it's created a almost like a crackle effect. So I'm going to take my infusions Give them a bit of a shake. What I really need is to have this page flatter. So I'm just going to try and weigh it down a little bit. That's better. Just with a bulldog clip. So that it doesn't sort of bow as much. So I'm just going to tap and you don't need much to go a long way we'll do green man give them a shake beforehand uh, olive tree you can just use one but I like to mix it up and the sage and you notice I'm concentrating on these two corners. I tend to work diagonal corners. I've got my little mini mister, which has just got plain water in it. And I'm going to go fairly high so that I don't get, hopefully, big puddles of water. It will activate our infusions. And because the gesso acts as a resist, the infusions move. Now, I knew this was going to happen. It always comes to the lowest point, which is just there. So I've got this at the ready, and I'm just going to mop up any bits from the middle.
it will keep doing it but because I've got my masking tape and my gesso hopefully it shouldn't seep through to the underneath pages I like what's going on here you can see I've got all the different colours of the infusions but I've also got the walnut ink that's in the infusions is doing something different I'm liking this area but I need more water there that's it it just was not quite moving enough every time you do this you will get something different it will be completely different and a wonderful surprise right, we'll go just down the center there again tomorrow I don't want a big dark line in the center I don't mind a little bit of a line but I don't want too much If you've got areas and you don't like it and you think it's going to be too dark, cotton bud. Just touch it and it just absorbs some of the colour. I'm liking this how this is going because I've got some linear effects with the masking tape. Uh, but I've got some organic shapes as well just want just to absorb a little bit of some of the dark areas now I can leave it to dry like that or I can give it a bit of a blast with a heat gun I particularly like this area here I'm just going to give it a little bit of a blast it will move it and it will alter it so I would suggest try this technique but actually do one page where you leave it to dry, another page where you actually heat dry and then you'll see the difference because it moves the inks when you heat dry it and you get a slightly different effect. And you see on this corner it's moving it so you do get a slightly slightly different effect. Sometimes you can use the movement of the heat to your advantage and move things into areas that they weren't already in. I just need that. Oh, that bit is annoying me a little bit, so I'm just going to take a little bit of that off. I'm liking all the little detaily bits that I'm getting. I think I think I need a little bit more down here. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit there and this will travel to this edge. just a little bit lacking in that edge. You can see it's moved some of the others. If you want it to move, just lift your page. I've got some lovely areas here where I can actually see the text and the drawings on the page peeking through. I think that's lovely. Um, I like the linear effects I've got with the tape so we'll leave that to completely dry 
on its own and then we'll add some stamping and some some something else sometimes I think I just want just a little bit of something but not a lot because I think sometimes you need to let the page speak for itself but I'm really happy with that so far but you can see what I mean by the infusions so if I when this is completely dry I'll take this off I'll spray that and the infusions will possibly keep moving a bit more but I've also got this which might be quite interesting to use in space in places right so for some reason my camera decided not to film the last portion I've dried the page I really really like how it is I'd chosen some tags of this sheet this one this one that one this one and that one um, it's by Chow Bella um, sign of the times and on the back it's ledger paper but I really like it so I thought it went well with this I'm just making sure we are recording yes so I don't I want this page to be quite subtle I don't want it to be in your face um, a lot of the pages in this journal are quite dominant so I want some restful pages so um, I've cut some of the tags I've cut the top off because I don't like the tag shape for this particularly I was thinking along the lines of that here you'll see I've done some stamping I'll explain that in a moment that was on the uh, bit that didn't record so I was thinking along the lines of that. I'm using the tops of the tags that I've cut off because I don't like to waste anything. So I was thinking along those lines when those are because it's got an underwater feel to me. So for the moment we'll take those off but you get the idea of what I'm thinking. So I'm going along the underwater theme. So I've got archival link in cobalt, archival link in French ultramarine. Uh, I won't do it again because I've already done it, but I've used this um, Paper Axis Mini EM60 by Tracy Scott and I've just stamped occasionally, randomly, the little circles. Uh, once those are dried, because it's on gesso so it takes a little bit longer to dry, I've got my ink tents, teal green, and I'm just going to add a little bit of colour to some pops of colour just to some of the circles not all of them just some and these will look different when I get the colour into them and I'm just going randomly and it could be that some of these are completely covered up by the toppers but some may not be right and let's find a nice little brush all right and then we'll just add a little bit of water and we just get the nice pop of colour now I just think that's maybe a bit rash so we'll just I'm a great fan of q-tips cotton buds and we'll just take those down a little because we've got a bit of colour on there we won't waste it
Yes, I quite like the fact that I'm getting the colour that's left on the cotton bud. Oh, I'll just get a bit off there because there'll be some on there. Into the page. Yeah, that, that's better. It was a little bit too in your face. I'll just take that one down a little bit more. Yeah, I uh, quite like that. Yes. So I'm going to stick the toppers on, the uh, focals on, and then we'll come back and you can see how it's finished. What I might do is just edge my page slightly with if I can find a, a sponge, clean sponge, just with French Ultramarine. It's getting quite dry is that ink pad, so I don't think that's going to work. We'll do the, the blue with the cobalt, which is also dry, but more of a sea theme. So I'll continue, I'll ink on the edges and I'll show you when it's finished. I'll just use either gel medium or PVA glue to add my toppers on. Probably gel medium because the gesso will Ask, act as a resist for the PVA, so let's bring it in on the corners. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's it. Right, so I think I'm just about finished. I've just used a white gel pen and some sequin waste just to add some little white dots here and there. I'll just lift it up and hopefully you'll be able to see the details of the infusions. They work wonderfully on top of gesso. They work wonderfully anyway, but I love them on top of gesso. So I hope that's given you some ideas.